Welcome to World Surf Weekly. Today we've got world number four, Felipe Toledo on the line for some Q&A from home. Get ready to relive the greatest 10 point rides from the Rip Curl Pro Bells Beach. Plus, 2001 world champion CJ Hobgood shares his thoughts on winning a title in a shortened season. And since surfing is on hold, it's a perfect time to head into the kitchen and chef it up with Connor Coffin. Let's go ahead and dive right in. World Surf Weekly, action. What's up internet friends? Chris Cote here broadcasting from my living room yet again. And hopefully you're all watching this from the safety of your own homes and making the most of our time in quarantine. Well, as the world gets used to social distancing and putting our lives on hold, we're still gonna bust out this show for you on a weekly basis, but we're gonna do it via cyberspace. While we can't technically go surfing in most parts of the world, we can still talk about surfing all day long. Well, to start it off, we got some news last week from the IOC. The International Olympic Committee made the announcement that the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games will happen as scheduled, but just one year later. So we are gonna start the Olympics July 23rd through August 8th, but it's gonna happen in 2021. The good news there is Olympic surfers have one extra year to train. That means they're gonna be ripping that much harder. And finally, to kick off episode three, got the opportunity to talk to world number four, Felipe Toledo. And yes, I did procure his phone number on the down low and I did use it. It took him a few times to answer, but when he did, I hit him with some rapid fire Q&A. Chris. Felipe. What's what up? up? Let's start easy. Uh, how do you start your days in this time of quarantine? Opening my eyes? Wow. <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> hello there. Who are we speaking to here? That's little Mahina. Hello. Hi, Mahina. <laughs> That tells me that, that you've stayed plenty busy. Uh, yep. What are some essential things that have gotten you through this uh, time of social distancing? Them. There's Family. One right there. There's one. The other one's probably running upstairs. <laughs> tell me about the best birthday party you've ever had in your life. I'm always at Bells, so there's no best birthday party than surfing perfect Bells Beach. <laughs> Oh. Tell me what it feels like to ring that bell. Here we go. You ready? Yeah. There we go. It feels good. It feels good. What's the most meaningful trophy to you on that wall? K-Bay, 2017. <laughs> Boom. There you go. Best advice uh, your mom has ever given to you? Stay humble. Trestles or pipeline? Definitely pipeline. Claims or no claims? Oh, claims for sure. Definitely claims, bro. Who's your biggest rival on tour right now? I feel like Gabriel and Ito is definitely my biggest rivals. Uh, who's your favorite person to surf against? Kevin Slater. Can you recognize your dad's whistle through the crowd? Oh yeah, easily, man. There's nothing like my dad's whistle, bro. Well, how many different types of whistles are there? So there's a lot. There's one uh, telling me there's a set coming, one that's uh, that's for me to look at him. There's another one that's when I finish a wave and I gotta pedal back really fast. There's another one that's that's like I gotta pedal towards the wave. There's lots of them. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you guys, it's secret. I know, that's, that's <laughs> All right, couple more. Are you the fastest surfer in the world? Well, um, after Mick Fenn said I am, uh, I was the fastest surfer in the world, I'll take that. You know, oh, thank you, Kenny. How are you staying so positive? And it seems to be you're pretty happy right now. It just feels good to be home with the family. And um, that for me, it's, it's positive enough to, to go through all this, these crazy times. But um, yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been really fun staying at home with the kids and, and playing daddy. <laughs> Who's gonna win the world title in 2020? I will. <laughs> easy, easy, easy answer, man. I will. <laughs> That's all we need to know. Felipe, thank you so much for inviting us into your house. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate your call. Appreciate it, guys. You. Love Felipe's response to the question about who's gonna win the world title in 2020. I will. That's pure confidence, pure Felipe Toledo. If you want more from Felipe, check out a brand new series we're calling Lawn Patrol. Now, this will be appearing soon on WorldSurfLeague.com, and it will allow you access into some of your favorite surfers' lairs. 
As COVID-19 continues to cause havoc around the globe, let's check in with our surf community, starting with the Brazilian superstar, Iago Dora. Hey guys, I'm speaking from Florianópolis, Brazil, where I have been in quarantine since March 15th, and I'm just staying home with my family, and I'm glad I have my whole family and my girlfriend here with me, so I'm making the most of this time, and trying to stay active at home, training a little bit and watching a lot of surf on the TV and skating around the house a little, just pretending I'm doing surf and everywhere it's super empty right now, just just the necessary stuff are open. It's pretty, it's pretty empty, it's like a desert right now and of course there's still a few people walking around and exercising on the street but as long as they stay away from everyone that's fine and uh looks like everyone is respecting the the rules pretty well and i'm supporting volcom stay home for this initiative and i hope you are too yeah yago stay safe in brazil amigo here on oahu we have a stay at home work at home order still in place here as well as that 14 day quarantine for all arrivals to the hawaiian islands a new quarantine 14 day quarantine now in effect for travel in between the Hawaiian Islands. So we are really tightening things down. We're actually asking for all non-essential travel to the islands to be halted right now. We are an isolated population and our supply train looks pretty good right now, but we do see some effects of hoarding. So pleading to people, just take what you need. Don't panic. You know, as surfers, we know panic, it all starts inside of your own head. So have a calm head, just take what you need. In addition to that, let's think about it. Aloha's global. Smiles are free. So hand out smiles and live aloha through these troubling times and we're going to get through this. For more, I'd like to hear from Manu Nui, the big bird, the condor. Peter Mel, what's going on in Northern California? Thank you, Kaipo. Hope all's well with you and the family. Here in Santa Cruz, we've been under shelter in place order since the 16th of March. We were one of the first counties in the nation to actually go under those orders, which means that all non-essential businesses are closed. I did have a tour through Santa Cruz just to kind of see, uh, take the temperature of the town. Went through the downtown area. Most of the stores in that area are all shut. Went up through the west side to see uh, how it looked along the cliffs there. West Cliff can be quite busy. Um, most of the parking lots are all either shut or they limit how many parking spaces are, are in there. But for the most part, I think everyone's um, keeping that physical distancing happening, which uh, I think is very important to not spread this virus. I know in Australia, um, you guys are under the same restrictions or similar restrictions. Pots, uh, what's going on down there? Thanks, Pete. I hope all you guys are staying safe over there in California, mate. We miss all you guys. Uh, over here in Australia, um, stage three restrictions at the moment, which basically mean um, only necess uh, necessary travel, which means food, uh, medical supplies and basic exercise. Um, can you surf? Yes, you can, but only in your local area. Lucky for us, uh, we live in a quiet area, a walking distance from the beach, so we can sneak over to the beach, have a surf. Obviously, you've also got to practice uh, social distancing uh, amongst all of that, so pretty tight restrictions around here. Uh, we are in a sort of a, a tourist area, so a lot of the small businesses in our area are struggling right now. They've had to close their doors, you know, the, the tourists basically have stopped coming. So energy around the area, well, a lot of the locals were kind of in denial uh, at the beginning of, of the, the COVID-19, but I think most people are now starting to take it on board. There's still those people that aren't bloody listening. So, you know, get home, stay home, stay safe, look after yourself, look after your friends, um, and, and make sure you check on your friends too. There's a lot of people that are doing it tough right now. So uh, make sure you pick up the phone and, and just make sure they're okay. Um, other than that, um, we, we're just trying to stay tough here in Australia. We love you guys. And uh, just one more question. Has anyone heard from Joe? Where's Joe Tapel? <laughs> Thanks, Potts. Yeah, actually, we did reach out to Joe Tapel to find out what he's been doing with his time without any surf to call. And this is what we got. Lush, overgrown, yet exceptional. The backyard that all backyards are compared to. Once deemed a seemingly insurmountable proving ground for the bold and the brave that thirst the cup of glory of the title. The Baby Backyard Games. That's me. And it all starts now. Okay, me, my turn. <laughs> what? That's it? Come on, Joe. We wanted to see some of those backyard baby games. 
Well, never fear. We did find some waves for Joe and the crew to call, and these are gems. I'm talking about some of the best perfect tens to ever go down at the Rip Curl Pro Bells Beach. That's coming up after the break. Welcome back to World Surf Weekly. With Easter approaching, a lot of surf fans have Bell's Beach on their minds. I'm one of them. So this gives us the opportunity to go back into the files and ask Joe Turpel and the commentary crew to talk us through some of their favorite 10 point rides that went down in past Rip Curl Pro Bell's Beach events. So let's hand it off to Joe, Pete, Kaipo, and Potts to remind us what makes this wave and this event so special. Joel Parkinson's 10-point ride on the last wave of the Rip Curl Pro Bells Beach will go down in history as probably the best way you could finish a surf contest, especially if you're Joel Parkinson. Let's go back to the era. Member Parko and Mick were all-time rivals, their rivalry coming to an all-time peak. At this time, they weren't even on speaking terms. Parko in the final took control early, and with the lead and priority, we're into the countdown. Parko holds Mick off a wave and takes off on the final wave of the event. The horn goes off. At this point, Parko could just celebrate and soul arch his way down the line, but he rips it to pieces. Beautiful carving work with that rail from Parko. Unbelievable tempo that is second to none at Bells. He even gets barreled down the line on this victory lap. Crushes the finish, loses control, but the moment was so clear. He just capped one of the most memorable events in Bells Beach history with that perfect 10 against a guy in the water that he wants to beat more than anybody else in the entire world. Fanning was on the wave behind him. They both rolled up on the beach way down by the Winky Pop button and the celebration began. Parko took his third and what would be his final bell of his career. All right, let's set up Felipe Toledo's perfect 10 from the 2017 Rip Curl Pro Bells Beach. This was a round one heat, so not a lot of pressure because no one loses, but that winner gets to skip into round three, so there's some importance to it. I would say that Felipe, when you think about Bells Beach and what kind of performance that usually wins this event, it's about carves on the face. It's using the rail, where Felipe, he likes to change the script, and he flipped the script in this heat. He starts out this heat with an 817, an 893, and then a 9.7, and then, of course, this perfect 10. And if you look at this wave, you watch, there is Connor and Bede sitting outside, Felipe just roaming the inside section, it was a four foot wave, and the thing that's so nice about this wave is, is that he surfed it to a perfect 10. The wave quality wasn't there, usually the wave quality will give you the perfect 10. This one, he surfed his way to that with the above the lip style surfing, he had the aerials, he had the carves, he had the snaps, and then the finish. Everything right there encompassed into one perfect 10. Every judge, all five of them, a perfect 10. Great performance from Felipe Toledo. The Rip Curl Pro Bells Beach is the world's longest professional surfing competition. And in 2019, Bells was absolutely pumping. In the women's final, we saw Courtney Kalal, already a two-time winner, versus Malia Manuel. And we could see why Courtney Conlog's spirit animal is the tiger as she clawed and chomped her way through this large, long Bell's Bowl wall. The finish on this wave, exceptional. Times that final carve, rides ahead of the explosion behind her, and in her body language, urges the judges to give her the 10, and the judges did give her a 10, allowing Courtney Conlog to ring that bell for a third time. The final between Mick Fanning and Kelly Slater 2012 was, again, a, a barnstormer. I mean, you're looking at two guys that have dominated Bells Beach for, for such a long period of time, but, you know, the freakish talent of Kelly Slater, uh, um, this is what we're talking about, you know, just a wave that, that really was going to produce one maneuver. The maneuver he chose was, was probably one of the most incredible air reverses we've ever seen, full rotation. Um, you know, Kelly landing out in the flats was probably one of the more dangerous ways to produce that maneuver but again needing a massive score to get back in the final against Mick Fanning went for broke and uh, and that's why Kelly's still around today I mean he's still got those moves he's still got those moments where he produces something absolutely incredible um, that's why he's so valuable on tour I mean he draws the crowds and that's exactly why um, you know he's, he's one of the favorite surfers around the world for a lot of people and he will be for a very long time 
epic waves right there. How nice was that to hear our commentary crew talk about surfing again? It reminds me how much I'm missing it right now. Well, speaking of that, we've got a trip down memory lane. We're talking about the WSL Vault. We're gonna crack it open and go back to 2001 to check out a young Mick Fanning, the 19-year-old White Lightning, as he takes it to some of the world's best at Bells. You can check it out on Monday on worldsurfleague.com. Well, in these times of self-isolating, one bright spot is the fact that we've all become a little bit closer thanks to technology. Yeah, we're looking at happy hours, dance parties, live music shows, online classes, and even weekly surf shows coming at you via cyberspace. Now, before we hear from CJ Hobgood, let's take a look back at what he did just after announcing his retirement in 2015. CJ Hopgood out the back has a set and takes a clean run through the pit. But just, oh my goodness, I'd given up on him. He emerged, CJ Hopgood. I think he surprised Amazing. himself. What about that effort from uh -oh. CJ? Ronnie, uh, that's, I, I'm thinking 10 straight away. I mean, that was by far the best barrel we've seen so far in this event. <laughs> Taj will glance and that'll have CJ use his priority. Sneaking in under the hood and pipeline. This thing goes wide open. A challenging exit oh. for Hopgood and he is able to make it on the inside. Oh my goodness. CJ in the barrel doing a good job driving down the line and makes his way out. CJ Hopgood. Wow, oh wow, oh wow. Ladies and gentlemen, by the way, those were two perfect tens. No pesky nine eights involved in that clip. Well, without further ado, don't go anywhere. We got a video chat with 2001 world champion, CJ Hobgood. That's coming up next. Welcome back to World Surf Weekly. Earlier this week, I had the opportunity to zoom in on CJ Hobgood and pick his brain to find out what it was like to live, surf, and win during a shortened season. So courtesy of the Hobgood documentary and Two If By Sea, let's take a look back and revisit the world-altering shakeup that happened in 2001 firsthand. 2001, start off the year great and Smoke now just covers lower Manhattan. There's three contests, France, Spain, Portugal. No way we were gonna do France. No way we were gonna do Spain. It was so close off the heels. It was too raw, too sensitive. And they just decided to cancel the whole leg. TJ, thank you so much for joining us. Let's go back to 2001. You know, the season is interrupted by a, an absolute tragedy. You know, you were in a, a world title campaign right when the year started. You were going full force at it in your peak of your powers. So then what happens when everybody finds out about the events on 9-11 in through the lens of the, uh, the surfing world? Honestly, like I've drawn off that experience like most of my life. I never dreamed of winning a world title when the year was shortened I mean, my dream was to like win pipe, world title, full year. Like that's what I always dreamed of. And your dreams and what you think was normal is not always going to be your normal. And more times than not, it's not going to be your normal. We're like living in this time right now where it's, it's not normal. It's not the story that we dreamed of. And I think the 2001 world title is, was like a perfect parallel or analogy with, with things that have always gone on, not only in my life, but well, we're all living in right now. When you get the world title, you have the elation, the joy. Did you also have, you know, guilt? Did you have feelings of, you know, what does this all mean when they handed you the trophy? I mean, obviously you earned it. No one can ever debate that. But what was going on through you, you know, psychologically, dealing with the joy, but also this kind of confusing emotion of what does this mean? I mean, that's a great question, Chris, you know, like I'm, I'm, it was that night, you know, everyone's partying and I'm, I'm sitting there at, at the pipe house at Jerry Lopez's house. And, you know, Kyborg looks at me and he goes, dude, he's like, this is your day, CJ. Like, this is your day. Like, 
And I just looked at him and I was like, dude, I, I don't know how I feel. I just couldn't even like live in that story at that moment. It was just, it was too hard. It was outside of me. And maybe that was the perspective I have. I'm 22 years old and you know, those sort of things. Um, so dude, it was just hard. It took time, man. And I think, I think that's what's helped me out in these times right now. That brings us to 2020, right? You've got John John Florence returning. Gabriel Medina is angry coming back on tour. Italo is firing on all cylinders. Um, once we kick this thing back off, because I, I think, you know, in my heart, I know we will. And I, I'm sure you feel the same. It, it's going to take some time, but we're going to kick it back off. Uh, what advice do you have? You've been through something similar. What advice do you have for the surfers sitting around waiting uh, to eventually get that call to go back out there? You just do what you do. The kids are gonna be warriors. They're gonna go out there and just try to slay the dragon. I think that's fine for them. I think the older crew, it gets a, it, you know, it gets a little bit trickier on how you know, the story gets played out. Um, you know, one I think about a lot too is Kelly. I mean, this is, you know, potentially could be his last year. Like, he's already switching the gears. Like, oh my gosh, like I might have to go another year. Let's just say, hypothetically, things kick off in May, tour goes full blast. Who is your surfer to watch in 2020 when we kick this thing back off? It's got to be Gabriel and John John. You, you can't look past those guys, man. Idolo is just just the catalyst, and we love his story and the people's champ. But like, as far as you know, oil and water goes, and, and the villain and the hero, we want essentially John John and Gabriel to go at it toe to toe, just part the Red Sea and let these guys just freaking duke it out for twelve rounds. Um, that's what we want. Uh, abbreviated year, similar situation to what you were in. What, what advice do you give me? I'm world champ 2020. What are you telling me? Be kind. You don't have to have an answer. You don't have to have a feeling. The feeling you feel now will be different a year from now and two years now. Just, just be patient, man. Let's just allow time to do, do what time does. That's what I would say. I love it. Thank you so much, CJ Hobgood from Orlando, Florida. Uh, obviously, life without surfing right now is a little confusing, but it's about staying positive like CJ has been. So, CJ, I'm going to turn you back loose into the world. Be safe right out on. there, and I'll be checking back in with you very soon, all right? All right, brother. You guys have a good one. Thanks for your time, as always. Always great to hear from CJ Hobgood. Now that was just a snippet of our conversation. So to hear the full interview, head on over to worldsurfleague.com. And now after the break, this is gonna be special. We've got a cooking class for you. That's right, quarantine cooking from the one and only Connor Coffin. We're gonna learn how to make spaghetti and meatballs. Let's go. Welcome back to World Surf Weekly. When Connor Coffin isn't doing beautiful power turns at an exotic location around the world, he's probably in the kitchen. This is On Hold with Connor Coffin. What's up everyone? Connor Coffin here. Welcome to my kitchen. Um, interesting times with the coronavirus and uh, something I've been doing a lot of lately is cooking. Salute. This is one of my favorite recipes. Uh, I learned it from a really dear friend in Italy. I'm gonna show you guys how to make some meatballs today with some spaghetti and marinara sauce. So uh, yeah, come on in. Step one here, we got a little mixture of grass-fed butcher box ground beef and some uh, ground pork. So we're gonna add that in here, chop up an onion, probably a quarter of an onion. And we're gonna take some bread. White bread's best for this. Two to three slices of bread, and you soak it in a little oat milk here. We'll leave that to the side. Let that soak in. Crack two eggs. It's kind of the glue for the meatballs, along with the bread. Hit it with some Parmesan cheese here. Can't go wrong with Parmesan. Salt, pepper, some parsley. Throw this parsley in. Get this bread. 
pretty much all our ingredients right there. I'm just gonna mix it all together. Oh, we'll lose some bread. Just wanna make sure they're gonna be goopy enough to stick together, but obviously not like runny or anything. Yeah, it's looking pretty good here. Now we're gonna roll out the meatballs, grab a chunk and get it going here. All right, so we got all our meatballs rolled out here. We're gonna drop them in the sauce. So I just place them in here in my sauce. Wow, the sauce is hot. All right, so meatballs have probably been in there for like six, seven minutes. I'm gonna flip them over so that the other sides get cooked through too. While the meatballs are cooking, I'm gonna throw my spaghetti in, get that going. Bam. All right, meatballs are done. Spaghetti's almost done. We're gonna pull these out of the sauce for a second here. You know you didn't screw it up when your meatballs don't fall apart. It's the most important thing. Key to pasta, I think, is this right here. You take the pasta out, put it in with the sauce. Crucial element to time cooking like that. A little bit of that, just a little olive oil. Parmesan cheese, all cooked, the noodles with the sauce. I'm gonna plate up the dish. Grab a couple of meatballs here. Garnish. There we go. Spaghetti and meatballs, traditional Italian dish. My really good friends there, and uh, also a place that's been hit really hard by coronavirus, so thanking you guys. And this is one of my favorite comfort food dishes and perfect for a lockdown stormy night here in Santa Barbara. So thanks for joining us. Take care. Good. <laughs> well, Connor, when all this social distancing ends, make sure you save a place for me at your table. I'm coming for dinner. And if you're like me, you can't have just one. So let's get five of them. I'm talking about the set of the day. Let's kick off with Brandon getting absolutely pitted from the relative safety of his own living room. Oh, look out, foam ball got him. You know what I do like here is that Brandon's actually using that fireplace, the bricks, as an artificial reef just to add to the danger element of living room surfing. Nice too, Brandon. Too bad you got his plan. Moving on, happy birthday to Tyler Wright. Two-time world champion, turned 26 on March 31st. Cannot wait to see what you do on the 2020 championship tour. Now let's go back to 2015. This is when Kelly Slater broke the internet announcing his second retirement. Of course, let's remember, he made that announcement on April 1st. Joke's on us, April Fools. <laughs> now, something that is not so funny, something that is very serious was this paddle battle. That's right, Ezekiel Lau and John John Florence got into it on April 2nd, 2018. And this is where the Ezekiel Lau rule came from. That exchange right there. I just kind of laugh at it, you know, just like paddling over my board and stuff. And Maybe I'll do that in the next event. And speaking of controversy, there's nothing controversial here. This is a baby getting barreled. And then this is exactly what we want to see on the internet. Babies getting two. Look at that. Dry barrel from one of our favorite surfers. Love it. Thanks for watching World Surf Weekly. On behalf of our production crew over here at the Cote household, we want to say stay positive, stay safe out there, and we will see you next week. Do you like that? Well, if so, subscribe over there and then watch more videos over there. And then tell us your favorite videos down there. It's a three-step process. Do them all now.